So we've been covering this paper, Algorithm for Automating the Selection of a Temperature Dependent Change Point Model. And in the past two videos, we've gone over two of the three tests that make up that algorithm. The first test we called the shape test, the second test we called the significance test, and the third we called the data population test. And in this video, we're going to be covering this data population test. And it's best if I just bring over a plot that shows really why this test is needed. So let me copy and paste and let's scroll down a little bit. So here we have a plot of average daily temperature on our x-axis and electricity use on our y-axis. And this was from some synthetic data. And you can see that this is a fairly hot climate and in which the average daily temperature, even in the coldest months, is still this is very high, 66, 67 degrees Fahrenheit. I believe this was Miami, if I remember correctly. And if you just fit a four-parameter model, so a model that has two lines, each having a slope section, if you put no constraints on that model, a lot of times you'll end up with something like this, where it fits well in one section, and then to make the model as good as it can in terms of root mean squared error, it will just go through the last point at whatever angle it sees fit. And obviously, or at least it should be obvious, that this is a non-reasonable slope. If we went down another five degrees, you had a significant increase in electricity use where if you just told anybody off the street and asked, okay, at let's say 18 degrees C, where would this trend continue? They would probably say something around here, not something up here. And so while this model, yes, if you stayed within the bounds from here to here and you look at, well, this, this is the only thing you're going to be predicting with anyways, that's okay. But a lot of times when we're doing monthly models, so you notice there's 12 points here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 months of the year, a lot of times the next year might have one month hotter or colder. Well, I said that backwards, hotter or colder than the previous year. And so there will be some level of extrapolation, even though extrapolation is never advised in regression modeling. So how did we attack this problem? Well we said if you have any sloped section you need at least 25 percent of the data to be part of that section. So let me draw another picture just to hopefully explain that. So let me scroll down and let me draw a new set of axis lines. Let's do this. And let me draw some points. So let's say we have something that looks like this. And say that there was 12 or 10 over here and 2 over here. I didn't draw that many. But if we had a model that only goes through two points. So notice this slope section only has a point here and a point here. We would conclude that that's not enough based on this test. So to have at least 25% with 12 points, you would need three. So if there was another point up here, that would now make that model valid. You could say green check mark. And so this helps us avoid these types of models where at the extreme ends that we go off into unreasonable territory. So we now know if we have a slope and we've chosen it to be significant. So notice the previous test, this shape is fine. Both these slopes are very sloped, sloped, I guess, and so they're both significant, but this model's still not okay. So now with the combination knowing, yes, we have a a significant slope and that we have enough data points 
that are along that to justify that it really does belong there, that it really is a trend, now we can be very confident in our model. And so those three things, checking that the shape makes sense, that there's enough of a slope that makes sense, and there's enough data to consider that slope a trend. If we have all three of these things, then our model is good to go. And we'll show in the next video how these all come together. So I hope you'll join me for that. See you in the next video.